you ever just like get an idea in your head that you just can't get out and like no matter what you do you have to focus on this idea and you can't sleep you can't think about anything else you start designing it in your head or whatever it is and you have to sit down and work on it and your brain just refuses to let you do anything else until you get it out there. Well, that's what this project has been like for me. And I decided that I wanted to put together like another devlog attempt and actually get something out. And I started working on it. And then like one thing led to another, which led to another, which led to another until eventually I ultimately ended up kind of like what you see here now. And, and I'll tell you what, I got the itch, man. I got the itch. I think if I had to make a New Year's resolution, it would be to actually finish one of the projects that I've been working on and get done. And so I'm really gonna try and like force myself to sit down and just take this all the way, you know, start to finish, get it done. But let's start from the beginning and I'll kind of walk you through how I've gotten this far. So I don't know if like you're familiar with, with um, tilt shift photography. It's the kind of photography that's usually taken down from like a high angle and like it makes everything look like miniatures. It makes everything look really small, right? Um, well, I've always wanted to try this in like Unreal in real time and like a game engine just to see what it would look like. And I know a lot of games do a top down perspective, but I really wanted to try and nail that look that just makes everything look small. So I started dabbling with that. Um, I think I have a picture up there. So I started dabbling with that. Looked up some tutorials as far as like what it is that makes tilt shift photography work. And what you get, other than just the high angle, you also get like these really specific blurs. And I heard somebody say that it makes the brain trick you into think that like you're focusing on something that's very small, which is kind of why it has that effect. I don't really know the science behind it or like anything why it works that way but I know it's cool. <laughs> so after playing with that and more or less being successful at it, right? Finally getting that look I was going for. I thought, man, this would make a really cool, like I thought this would make a really cool perspective for like a top down shooter game. And I was like, well, why not? I remember when I was a kid, we used to play this game called Loaded. And if I find some video footage of that, I'll put it up here. Um, but it was awesome. And I was probably too young to be playing something like this, but I don't know, it was just, I, my childlike mind, this was the coolest thing in the world. I've always wanted to do something that was kind of like in that vein, like a spiritual successor to learn, right? Um, and I was like, why not, right? Why not just try and do the thing? One thing I really like about like, older style games and game development is that you really just got this sense that the developers really did more or less whatever they wanted right like if you go through and read descriptions of um like characters and games or like even just like difficulties there's a lot it was a lot different than than it is now now everything's really polished which is good it's great you know it's awesome but like back then it was just something really like i guess raw about it you know like you see it a lot, like a good example I think of this is the descriptions in um, Halo, like the Halo games, right? Modern descriptions are like, let me see if I can find it real quick, hold up. So like for Halo Infinite, right? Like the description for the easy difficulties, take in the sights and sounds around the ring as you slaughter outmatched adversaries. Recommended for players new to Halo. Whereas like in, back in the very first Halo, it was your foes cower and fall before your unstoppable onslaught, yet final victory will leave you wanting more. Yes, girl, get it! Legendary on Halo Infinite, run little demon recommended for fans of jackal snipers. Whereas in like the original Halo, it was you face opponents who have never known defeat, who laugh at alien tongues at your efforts to survive. This is suicide. Yes, mm. I love it. Some good places though, where you see a lot of this is like in characters of back in the day, like in Loaded, for example, one of the main characters name was Foink. Um, he was like this killer clown guy, right? There's also like a big baby, um, because why not? There was another guy who was like an undead pirate dude. His name was like Captain Hands or something. And why not, right? Like who cares? The developers just really did not care. 
You see a lot of it in like Time Splitters too, you know, like freaking or as well. Not Time Splitters 2 specifically, just also Time Splitters, you know, yeah. But yeah, so developers just did essentially whatever they thought was cool. And I kind of want to do a little bit of something like that. So with that, with that being said, I wanted you to meet Frank with the PH. <laughs> My wife has told me that, you know, there's a fine line between inspired by and you know blatant plagiarism so she said i'm writing that line pretty hard um in reference to the Frank and frank character uh but i love him you know he's cool he's my little buddy my little dude i think i have some ideas for maybe a few other characters i'm not entirely sure at the moment i'm like we'll see if i even get that far i guess but uh yeah mm. i also forgot that Another aspect of like tilt shift photography is like you see it a lot in time lapses, right? So you get this kind of like stop motion kind of effect where everything is like, instead of running smoothly, it's do, 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 do. And I kind of really wanted to try and mimic that as much as possible as well, which is why I'm using this kind of like stepped animation. Just to try and mimic that the best I can. I also got a uh, kind of a generic zombie guy done. I made this dude right here. I kind of got an Elvis shuffle thing going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you need a bunch of mindless drones to shoot, right? So here's my mindless drone. I did have this idea. Um, I'll show you this. I had the glowing eyes because at a distance, I want those to be pretty prominent, I, I guess, you know? Um, but I had this thought, like I could have an exploding zombie or something. So I did this. That was like blows and like as he's about to explode or whatever, he'll get brighter, right? It just and then good stuff. Good talk. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the game itself, I guess, and what I've gotten done here, right? Obviously, my controls are down. Um, I'm looking at my mouse, which is good. I have my creatures in there. They got a little bit of AI going where they kind of just walk around until they see me, and they'll run at me. Yeah, I mean, all the basics are done so far. Okay, I'm kind of at a crossroads now. i to figure out what I want to do next. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, obviously I gotta work out some environment stuff. Uh, I had an environment asset pack I was using there, probably in a different clip. Um, uh, but I'm not gonna use any of that. I wanna make all my own stuff, I guess. Um, maybe I'll reuse some of it. I don't know. We'll see. The pride thing. I know one thing I gotta do is I still have to figure out how I'm gonna make them attack the player. I mean, they die. But, uh, the player does not yet. I swarmed and it happens, you know, but yeah, it still looks cool. Kind of hard to get out of. Eee. I love this effect right here. Like when you zoom in and like really get a good look at things, ah, it feels good to me. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at so far, I guess. You know, I'll try and keep doing these, uh, updates that make progress and stuff like that um i don't know i gotta figure out what i'm doing next but yeah till then take it easy